What's up YouTube? Welcome to another episode of the Undergrad Forum. Now in this video I am going to show you all of the medical apps that I use on my iPhone. If you were to recall I made a video of all the medical apps that I use on my iPad. But I don't always have my iPad with me. Um, my white coat, you know, I can shove it in there. One of, one of my pockets will fit it, but it's kind of heavy. But you always pretty much have your phone with you. Whether you're in clinic, you're in the classroom, you're at home studying, wherever you have it. So there's some critical critical apps that I use and I thought I'd share them with you. It makes my med school life just that much easier. Number one, okay, so you're gonna get your basics up there that come with it. Number one that comes with it is this Reminders app. Now let me, I'll go ahead and focus it while I'm talking about it. The Reminders comes with your Apple uh, phone and I would actually recommend that you even tell your patients about it. So whenever I'm like sitting there in class and say I suddenly realized, oh, you know, I need to call so and so at 3 p.m. and ask them a follow-up question regarding, you know, are we going to be meeting tomorrow to talk about something? I'll just put make a quick reminder, and you can put. Um you know, it can even set, yeah, so you'll, you'll set a reminder. And you can just set it there as like a list, or you can set a reminder to it, actually alarm you at a certain time to re remind you of something. I, I'm, I'm sorry I keep saying the word remind here. But I use it all the time, and I even tell patients, you know, if you have to take a medication every single day, say like at 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. or in the afternoon, just set a daily, just set a reminder, put it on remind me daily at that certain time, and you will never forget to take your medication. Um, it's just like a simple thing, and if you have to take multiple medications, the multiple time, help your patients just program it in and they will be set. Um, they don't have to worry anymore, they don't have to miss medication. So in this sense, we're using technology for the good of the patients and they are not forgetting to take them. And you as a medical student can use it to, you know, hey, I have a lecture at 6 p.m. about, you know, how to read MRIs or whatever or something. You will not forget it as well. And even though you type in a reminder, you can set a specific alarm to go off at a certain time and that just makes life easy. The next thing here is, uh, sorry, let me show you the icon, is called Dropbox. It's an online uh, free cloud service that um, I use. Everyone I know practically uses it. And the beauty of it is you get like a couple gigabytes for free. And what you can do is upload directly to Dropbox.com or you can download an app and you'll have a folder um, that Dropbox will sync with the cloud. And the cool thing is you can access obviously whatever files you put on your computer they get synced to the cloud and you can access them from any com computer because you just go on Dropbox.com or any device by downloading this Dropbox app. And what I do is like this, you know, I have just like general files, my med school files, like my current second year stuff, my non-school stuff, my first year stuff, I call it previous and public, I don't know, I don't put anything in there but it just comes with it. And it's real cool. Like, you know, look at it now. I have all the classes I'm taking. Path, farm, clinical path, behavioral, you know, what we call clinical foundations. Um, and that's really cool. So I can just, like, you know, have all of my PowerPoints, all of my core notes, everything at my fingertips on my iPad, on my iPhone, on my computer, anywhere I go. I want to look something up, bam, I got it. And that's just a lifesaver, and it's free, which I love. <laughs> okay, next thing here, this is a new one that I, I actually paid for this one. It was 99 cents, but it's called Diagnosaurus, kind of a cute name. It's got a little bit of a di little dinosaur there, a little T-Rex looking guy. Uh, cute, but even though it's like a little cutesy name and it looks a little bit play, uh, childish and playful. It's very serious. It's extremely well made. Made by Unbound Medicine. I don't know why they went with such a little goofy, childish name. Maybe they're trying to be a little more casual. But nonetheless, I love this thing, and let me show you why. So you can use it in multiple different ways, and you can use it, I think, mainly in two ways. One, as a tool to help you, and second, as a tool to help you learn. And those two are almost hand in hand. Here's how. Say you're in clinic, patient presents with, um, let's just pick up something at random here. Um, I don't know, um, let's pick something cool, uh, lower extremity edema, okay, that just means like swelling of like their legs and stuff, that's kind of the way to think about it, okay, so lower extremity edema, and it'll tell you, okay, for your differential diagnosis, you need to be thinking about the cardiovascular and the non-cardiovascular risks. With respect to your cardiovascular, you should be thinking about, you know, CHF, pericardial fusion, pericarditis, etc. in this order. And for your non-cardiovascular, you should be thinking about these things in order. Why is this important? And you know, it'll have related differentials for you to be thinking about. And why is this important? Because what if your patient has unilateral edema? You should be thinking about that probably DVT, I would suppose. But why is this important? You may be asking yourself. Well, one, you know, when you, when you start getting around attendings, they'll ask you, okay, so, hey, Johnny, um, 
you know, what did the patient have, you know, present to me? And they'll present and they'll ask you, so what do you think it is? And these are the kind of things you should be thinking because the attending will be thinking of them and you need to be thinking of them as well. So I use this twofold. One, to kind of get an idea of where I should be going with my idea list. You know, I'll just sit there and think and then I'll look at this and say, oh, okay, and I was thinking of these things. Oh, I forgot one or two. And the beauty of this is it's a learning tool. You can use this all the time to learn. It's not like a cheat sheet. It's nothing wrong. It's just something you're using to help you constantly learn and remember everything that's totally high yield and that's popping up into your attending's mind and now you're developing the skills so it pops up in your mind. I mean, many times you'll open it and be like, yeah, yeah, I thought of this. Oh, forgot one or two. And you'll pat yourself on the back. Sometimes you'll have a hard day and you forgot a few. But the beauty is it's easy access. Before people had to carry little pocketbooks and, you know, flip through them and skim up and down. Now it's so easy. It's just like this. So that was symptoms. What if organ system? You know, what if a patient has a, let's pick something fun. Ooh, I don't know. Let's do pulmonary. That sounds like fun. And let's pick a random letter. What if they have mesothelioma? And, you know, let's tell you what it is. And you can look up differential diagnosis about it, right? And other content. So it's just a beautiful database of information regarding what you'll want in clinic. It's at your fingertips. It's, In my opinion, it's much better than, like, Wikipedia or Google. It's much more concise. And I would recommend it. 99 cents. I'm extremely happy I bought it. Okay. Uh, that's just USMLA QBank. You know what it is, come on. Okay, this one I got recommended to me. I haven't really started using it yet because I'm not in step one mode, but it's called Cram Fighter Study Planner for USMLA Step One. And what happens is, let me show you how I can do this, is that you'll set it, so here's how you'll, okay, you'll go into settings, and you will just like set up, a, I, I mean, I just put in random stuff here for you guys just to kind of get a, a feel, that you'll put a start study date, an exam date, and you'll tell it, you know, what books do I have, and they have every book that you could possibly one for step one in here and you just select all the books that you have and you tell them okay what Q banks do you, do you have you saw I had you world how many hours do I want to study today how do I want to sort them how many days do I want off you know you can reset your schedule and then it'll give you a schedule of what to study every single day why is this cool if you're studying for step one on your own, it's convenient. This app, I don't remember how much it cost, it was a little bit pricey, but I just thought, hey, why not just try it and see if it's actually any good? I mean, I'll be starting using it soon, but so far it looks pretty good. I haven't actually had time to put in my test date and when I'm going to start and what books I have. I was just kind of playing with it one day and getting it ready for you guys, but there it is. I don't know if I recommend it. If you have a firm study schedule, just create it yourself. If you want a bit of help, my friend recommended it to me and she loves it, so why not? And then there's your QBank. You can access it remotely. Hippocrates, that's money. You just got to have it. Patient comes in with a certain, oh, come on, what is this? What is, everyone wants to update today. Um, anyways, patient comes in. What is what is all this nonsense coming in? Oh, I have it on airplane mode. Okay, sorry. I see I have it on airplane mode, so I don't get random messages when I'm trying to record this. Um, Hippocrates, you've just got to have it. Why? It happened the other day to me. I was in the clinic. Patient comes in. She had like a full chest full of medications, and she's like, "Here they are." And I'm like, "What are these? <laughs> you know, what? this is like a skittle bag." And beautifully. I popped out Hippocrates and because each medication will have like a certain shape and color and certain writing on it, you can easily identify the medication using Hippocrates. And you'll say, hey, do you take this for um, your high blood pressure, for your high cholesterol or whatever? And she'll say, oh yeah, that's what I, yeah, I remember that. And so it's just a beautiful, simple tool to help you identify medication. And when you can actually look up medication and learn about black box warning and dosing for peds and for adults. So Hippocrates, when it comes to farm, bank money. Medscape, oh man, I, now that I'm on airplane mode, I don't know if anything will work. What do I use Medscape for? So I'll just kind of sum up Medscape, Skyscape, and Medical Info, which is from the University of Maryland. Um, I know, I turned off my internet, calm down. Um, or what's it called? It's from the University of Maryland Medical Center, Medical Reference. Um, it's called the, whoopsies, Medical Info. And so these three, in addition to Unbound Medicine app, are all three things that you can use to search the internet for specific diseases. So say you are reading about a patient that has um, Kaposi's sarcoma, or a patient that comes in that has mesothelioma, or a patient that comes in having, um, I don't know, Graves' disease, whatever. You can just type it into any one of these four. Unbound medicine is going to be more of like a... Um, 
and article search, while these three, Medscape, Skyscape, and Medical Info, these three are going to be more of a search of like a database of information. So if you want to learn about Graves' disease, just type in Graves' disease. I, I unfortunately can't type it in. Um, you just need to just type it in there. Um, maybe you can. Let me, let me try it. Let me see if this one will work. Oh, good. This one works um, without an internet connection. So... There you go. And okay, so we just typed in Graves' disease together. See, now we're friends. Um, overview of Graves' disease. Let's look at the background. You just read it real quick. Okay, you want to look at a picture of Graves' disease. What are we going to show? Okay, it, it would need internet for that. Um, pathophys, just, you know, read all about it. So that's the beauty of it. It will teach you, you know, how to work it up. What, what are you going to need for your differential diagnosis? Um, Treatment and management, what medicate it leads you through how to take care of your patients who have a certain condition. So that was Medscape. Skyscape, let's see, it's the same thing. The reason why I have all three is that sometimes I'll type it into one and I'll realize it didn't do such a good do job and another one did. So let me type in here. This one, it doesn't search automatically. You have to type it in all the way and then click search for it to come up. So there's Graves' disease. And here we go again, that's not what I wanted. So let's search again. Let's see if it comes up. Okay, there we go. So Graves disease, definition, same thing, right? So sometimes some diseases are just better in one than the other, so that's why I have both. Same thing for the medical uh, uh, info. One thing that I just realized with you guys here, Medscape and Skyscape work offline, so if you're in a region of the hospital or somewhere where you can't get a good connection, your Wi-Fi is not there, the signal on your phone's low, you can just use those two, but medical info is pretty solid as well. And this Unbound Medicine app, this is oddly enough the same people that make the Diagnosaurus <laughs> or whatever it was called, um, you can just look up articles. So it's kind of like a free pub med, not as full access, but nonetheless. Now one here is called, okay, this one's called uh, eponyms. Uh, e or eponyms, I don't know how you pronounce it. And what it really is, is just like, you'll notice things like Graves' disease, or, um, sorry, I'm out of breath here, or um, Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And so let's just kind of work through one together. You'll get it. So endocrinology, Waterhouse Fredrickson syndrome, who is that? It just tells you what it is. So the things called eponyms are things like, um, or like Whipple's triad. You will be asked this by guarantee by someone. So these things that just have like a name, in the field of endocrinology, um, like Plummer's disease, you know, the Plummer's disease by itself makes no sense if you don't know what it is. If it's toxic, uh, toxic multinodular goiter. So if you know, if an attending saying, "Oh yeah, a patient comes with Plummer disease," and you're like, "What is that?" You can just look it up really quick on eponyms. So eponyms is things like Watterson Frederick House syndrome, Graves' disease, uh, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, things like this, and have a name after them. So say like, you know, on my channel I'm called Dakosara. What if we were to have a disease called Dakosara thyroiditis? You know, you wouldn't know what that meant. You would need to look it up on eponyms. Uh, wouldn't that be cool one day if we actually had that? Anyways, let's carry on. Next thing here is called Genetics for Medics. I'm supposing this is an app that's from the UK because in the US we don't use the term medics. But anyways, it has every single genetic disease you, you would want to know. And um, this was actually given to us by my school when we took the genetics course. So here's, for example, cystic fibrosis, mutation in the CFTR, cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductus regulator gene. And it just gives you all the critical high yield detail you need to know about it. So patient comes with genetic detail, boom, there you go. MedCalc, I haven't used it too much because um, I haven't really needed to yet. I'm not really in clinic, but um, I've heard it's great. Same thing with eye triage blood gases, just nine things to have. The New England Journal of Medicine app, I just like that because you can read really quick and learn. Here under medical, I have some stethoscope apps. I'll just bring them up for you so you can see them. One's from Lithman, one's called Auscultate, one's called iStethoscope. They're all just there for you to practice listening to auscultation sounds so you can get better at listening for various murmurs. Here I have Inkling. Inkling's the app that you'll recall from the um, iPad video. Um, in which I had various textbooks. The two textbooks I have is Bates' Guide to Physical Examination and Robin's Path of Disease. Two big books that I use, whether it be knowing your path or knowing how to do, say, a physical exam or something, you can access those textbooks on the go. And the beauty really is the search function, uh, where you can just find what you want really fast as opposed to just saying having to flipping through a book. And here, you know, three things, keynote numbers, pages, nothing special. Flashlight, this comes in handy. This stuff all comes with it. NPR News, 
YouTube. Oddly enough, YouTube is a medical app as far as I'm concerned. If you want to know how to do physical exam, if you want to know how to do something, uh, how to do certain sutures, just YouTube it, man. It's so easy. Um, Chrome, Flashcard Let, that's the app that I use when, um, to access my flashcards that I create on Quizlet.com for free. Um, you know, Shazam, there's like some like calendar stuff and some Southwest and some photo. No, that wasn't really medical. But that's it, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video of all the apps that I'm using on my iPhone for medical school. And the main one I forgot to mention, Safari. Come on, that should have been a given. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed those apps. Let me know if you have any questions. Please let me know what apps you use and that you have found useful. I would love to know. And as always, enjoy your studies.